Hey guys, it's Aaron. So a question we've had quite a few times, a request I should say, is to do a skill builder on dynamic components. Dynamic components isn't something that'll fit in a single skill builder. So we're making multiple skill builders on it. We're going to make uh, a series here of skill builders that are going to cover the creation of dynamic components. So this is the first one that we'll just jump right in. If you don't know, dynamic components are components, but they have a certain amount of user interface or additional data in them so they can change attributes or things based on user interface but we'll get into that we'll actually take a look at making some right now all right so here i am with mark in the vast open wasteland that is an empty sketchup file so we're going to hop in here and we're going to start by just making a box so i'm just going to use the rectangle tool i'm going to arbitrarily it's my favorite way to do it draw a box on the ground use push pull to pull that up. All right, so I don't know what size this is. It really doesn't matter because my dynamic component is going to actually control the size of this box. Um, so I'm going to triple click, right click, and say make component. So this is important. Get your initial geometry, select it, and then hop in and make it a component. It's very important that I put a title in here. So I'm going to call this my dynamic cube. It's important I put a name in here even more so than a regular component because this cube may end up inside another component in which case uh, I want to be able to reference it by name and when it's named you know component hashtag 17 that's gonna be hard to keep track of. So a name here that tells you what it is, is very important. The rest of the stuff is just regular component stuff. We're not going to get into that. I'm just going to go ahead and click create. Now that I have that, I'm going to right click on the component. It is important it's a component, not a group, because if it's a component, I get this dynamic component options. I have the option of opening attributes or options. I always forget which is which. So what I tell myself is alphabetically, A comes first. I'm creating this dynamic component. So the first thing I'm going to do is click attributes. Attributes are sort of the creator view for dynamic components. This is the information that I want to feed into this dynamic component. This is, is as I build it. The other one, dynamic component options, is the user interface. So once this is created, here's how the user will interface with it. All right, so let's take this cube and let's make a couple things happen. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it what color I want this to be using my dynamic component interface. I'm going to come over here to add attribute and I'm going to click plus. Plus is going to bring up a list of all the standard values that I can put into a dynamic component. We'll get into some of these, not all. This, it is a good time to point out, this is not going to be a comprehensive training of dynamic components. We won't touch every single thing you can do with dynamic component. This is more of a, a lengthy primer where we'll touch on some of the basics. So in this case, to put in a color, I'm going to click on material. And in material, I have the option of just typing something in. So I could just say red and hit enter. And guess what? That dynamic component's going to turn red. That's not real exciting for the user, though. The user just has a red box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here. This little icon on the right says add some user interface or additional information or details, as it calls it. And first thing I have here is user cannot see this attribute. So right now I'm just putting in a color and inside the component and that's it. But what I can do is I can say the user can actually see or modify this value. In this case, I'm going to say I want to let the user pick from a list. That list is a list of materials. I'm going to say add option. My first one I'll put in here will be red. And we'll assign that the value red. We'll also give them the option of blue. And since we're on a primary palette here, we'll put yellow in as well. So these names could be anything. I could say color 1, 2, 3, and 4. The value, as it says up in the top, I can put the name of a standard color, or I could put a hex color. If I have a specific material I've imported into my model, I could type the name of that material right here as well. In this case, we're going to stick with red, blue, and yellow. And I'm going to hit apply. All right, so look. Our component options, our user interface for our user changed. Now I have a drop list here. If I click that, I can see I have the option of red, blue, or yellow. So let's make this thing blue. I'm going to click on blue and 
Uh-oh, nothing happens. All right, right now, four out of five times that people have problems with dynamic components, okay, maybe that's a little much, but oftentimes when people are just starting to use dynamic components, they panic right now. I clicked to blue, it didn't change. Let me go over here and poke some stuff and see what happens. When you make a change in the dynamic component option screen, you do have to hit apply. Remember, we have one value right here, but there may be dozens of formulas and calculations and references to other components happening inside this user interface also. Rather than have this model redraw every time something changes, you do have to click the apply button to apply that change. So if I click apply right now, my box turns blue. Let's go one more time. Let's, let's see what yellow looks like. Mmm, yellowy. All right, so that's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Let's go add some more uh, controls in here. Let's give the user the ability to set the width, depth, and height or length of this material, of this, uh, this box also. So I'm gonna say add additional attributes. So what I'm talking about right now are the length, the X, Y, Z lengths. That's these right here. So I can add these one at a time by clicking on them. They'll go in here or I can actually add an entire group by just clicking add all, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to click add all. And there's my X, Y, and Z length. Now again, just like with color, I could come in here and just force a value. So I'll put 24 in there. You do have to hit enter after you type something into the screen. Something I forget regularly, 24, enter. Select all this, 24, enter. That's going to give me a cube now of two foot. That's all I did. You see, no, nothing has changed over here. My cube changed because I told it to be two foot by two foot by two foot, but it didn't change in my user options. That's because I didn't give the user the ability to change that. So what I can do here when I come into this, I have the option of setting the units. I'm going to stick with the default, which is inches. I'm going to say the user can see this and they can edit it as a text box. What do I want it to do I want to say len x? No, we'll go ahead and tell it that this is the width and we'll let them put that in whatever their models are. So this value up here is internally how it's going to store. So for calculations or anything like that, if you need it to know that it's centimeters versus inches, you can set that. The user, however, is going to get to put it in whatever they want to. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And I'm going to add that for each of these values. So I call that width. I'm going to call this the depth. And I'm going to add Z and call it the length. Whoa. All right. So now over here, I have width, depth, and length. So if I wanted to take this box right now and make it to an eight foot two by four, I could come here and say it's 3.5, it's 1.5, and see how it updated? Because what I did was after I put that value in, I hit the enter key. So enter is the same as coming, typing in a value and hitting apply, enter. And I want it to be eight feet. Remember, because I told it to use the user input values, I can type in inches or feet, and it will reflect that there. So there, I just used my dynamic cube to create an eight foot yellow two by four. But hold on, I hear you all say beforehand, you called this a cube. A cube can't be three different sizes like that. Duh. Okay, so let's make that change. Let's force this to always be a cube. We're going to come through here and change some stuff that we put in before. I'm going to remove the user's ability to see these three values. So I'm setting them all back to user cannot. And you can see as I change each one, that option goes away. It is important to have your options open as you make these edits because it's really easy to forget one of these values or not set something right. And you won't actually see it until you open this view up. All right, so now that we did that, I'm going to come in here and add one more attribute. This attribute's not actually on the side. It's going to be called what, what's called a custom attribute. And I'm just going to call it size. I'm going to give this size an initial value. I'm going to go back to 24, so what we had before, but that size isn't being used anywhere. 
We're going to click on details. It is a text field. We can actually change that to different things like specific inches or whatever we need to use there. We're going to say that the user can edit this from a text box. We're going to call it size and we are going to display in the user's end model units. The value on the inside will actually be inches. All right, having done all that, now we have to tell it that the length x, y, z are equal to whatever the user sets. So I'm going to come in here, and rather than typing a value, I'm going to type equals, and then after equals, I'm just going to click on size and hit enter. Same thing here, equals, size, enter. I could type it in too if I'm more of a typer, which I'm not, but I'll pretend for you guys, equal, S-I-Z-E, oh, see, I screwed it up. <laughs> equal S-I-Z-E and enter will get you the same result. So right now, the user has the ability to come in here and type in whatever value they want. So if they want 36 inch cube, they can hit that. Enter or apply will update that. You can see it changes on the inside. So an important point I want to talk about one more thing is these values. So right here I see a value. This is the value of the user input. Up here I see those same values. These values up here are not actually what it's storing inside. It's not storing that this is a 36 inch cube. What it's storing is that this length is set to whatever the size is. I can see that by toggling the formula view right up here at the top. So if I click on that, rather than seeing just numbers, it's going to say my x length is equal to whatever's in size. So is my y, so is my z. So that way I can come back over here and I can make this to whatever number I want. And when I change that once, it updates all those values because they're all equal to the same number down here. So there it is. That is a very basic primer on dynamic components. We're going to release a couple more of these once each week. I recommend that you get used to Everything we just did here, this is your homework for the week before next Tuesday when the next one comes out, is to go in and make this same cube and make it all function because the next thing we're going to do is going to add on to that. So um, I don't want the comments to be, wait a minute, how'd you make your initial cube? You guys should already know that. So get this cube, get it saved, and we will talk about making additional cubes and more pieces and more things as we move forward. Did you like that? If so, go ahead, click on like down below and click on subscribe too. That way you'll be notified when the next video comes out. So when we start telling you what to do with this cube to make a bigger, better, other dynamic component, you'll know that that's happening. We release videos about once a week, whether it's dynamic components or other. So you'll be notified if you click on the subscribe button. Most importantly, leave us a comment. Like I said, these dynamic component videos we're doing are directly because of people requesting them in the comments. We heard it a lot and we're responding by making the videos you want. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.